as far as accuracy wise, I'm going with Tua all day. Without the cheat on the field, he know that hey, Pat, you gonna have a long day today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hell of a player. I love him to death, but come on, man. Sometimes I just want people to just be like, hey, three. Like him. You remember a few days ago when Tyreek Hill made those comments on his podcast where he stated that Tua was a significantly more accurate passer than Patrick Mahomes? Well, we got a reaction from Patrick Mahomes and it was one of the most fascinating reactions I think I've ever seen. Because I think he literally got to the threshold where he almost insulted or took a little bit of a jab at Tyreek Hill, but it was like right below that. It was like the most polite way possible to essentially call Tyreek Hill a individual that is trying to chase some clout. So we're gonna break this down, man. This is gonna be a nice and fun little video for us to do. Before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We also do shorter versions of this content on my TikTok and Instagram page. And if you wanna support further, check out our Patreon and channel channel memberships program. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, if you have been paying attention to the incredible offseason that the Miami Dolphins have been having so far, there's been one detail that enemies of the Miami Dolphins have been consistently pointing out in order to, I guess, make Dolphins fans a little bit more pessimistic for this upcoming season. And that's the fact that there's a huge question mark surrounding how successful Tua could be this season. Now, again, I'm not one of those people. I think what the Miami Dolphins did was absolutely genius. I gave them like an A plus for their offseason, primarily because in terms of trade value, they didn't need to overpay for Tyreek Hill. They already had the assets to trade for Tyreek Hill. They had a ton of salary cap space as a result of Tua being on a rookie scale contract, and they really went all in to invest in him, even though they're not necessarily sure about him as a quarterback. Now, I know some Miami Dolphins fans are gonna say, Mike, what are you talking about? We are 100% sure about Tua as a quarterback. Bro, with all due respect, there are reports that three years ago, the Miami Dolphins were going to try to pursue Tom Brady despite Brian Flores not wanting it. The individual that I perceive and we all perceive to be Tom Brady conveniently showed up at the marina as Brian Flores was sitting there waiting. And then the moment Deshaun Watson said he wanted to be traded, Miami Dolphins were all in on trying to trade for Deshaun Watson. They just wanted him to settle his lawsuits first, but he didn't end up doing it. And even this past off season, the Miami Dolphins once again tried to pursue Tom Brady. Now look, I don't blame the ownership of the Miami Dolphins because they haven't been relevant in a very, very long time. And you're living in freaking Miami. Taxes are great, weather is great, beaches are great, women are great. People should wanna be in Miami. So I could understand being overly aggressive to trade for an established individual at the quarterback position. But to be honest, I am much more of a fan of this current plan. My boys J&D Productions recently made a video on the dangers of overpaying a quarterback. And I highly recommend you go check it out because I've said this a lot of times on this channel, it's very difficult to win a Super Bowl when you're paying a quarterback a significant sum of money. Typically, the only time it happens is whenever you pay that quarterback an above market contract. And then once they're on their final one or two years of that contract, the salary cap went up so freaking much that they were able to surround said quarterback with better pieces because that contract then eventually became undervalued. What I'm talking about is Matthew Stafford, for example. At the time he signed his last contract extension, he got paid a significant amount, but by the end of that contract, it was considered to be a low amount. So you might be wondering, Mike, why are you bringing this up, particularly about Tua and how it relates to other quarterbacks? Well, as a result, you're seeing a lot of Miami Dolphins, primarily Tyreek Hill. They're probably, in my opinion, their star acquisition of this past offseason, him and Teron Armstead, in my opinion, coming to Tua's defense. And it wasn't even on one occasion because this initially started with the fact that Tua threw that underthrown pass to Tyreek Hill and Miami Dolphins PR decided to post it. But you're seeing Tyreek Hill defend Tua like on a multitude of occasions. First was the tweet in reaction to the viral clip where Tyreek Hill said that we're talking about practice. Then was Tyreek Hill saying that Tua has one of the prettiest balls he's ever seen. I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing weird. You know, at first I thought it was gonna be something crazy, the ball going all over the place, but Tua actually has 
you know, probably one of the prettiest balls I've ever caught in my life. So um, it's, it's very catchable. I don't want to continue to, because the more I talk, the more it sounds weird. So it, Tua is a, is a very accurate quarterback. That's all I'm going to say. Then you had Tyreek Hill giving him probably one of the strangest compliments I've ever seen any wide receiver give any quarterback. And that was calling Tua Tagovailoa the equivalent of 10 Matt Moores, which very interesting, man. That's all I'm going to say. And this all eventually culminated this past weekend when Tyreek Hill said this on his podcast. As far as accuracy wise, I'm going with Tua all day. So which one would you rather have? The deep ball where you got to scramble around the field to try to go find it? Or do you want that accuracy to hit you right in the bread basket on the run? I want it to hit me right in the bread basket just like I did in the Buffalo Bills game and take it 70. And the rest is history. And again, this is not a shot at anybody. Right. It's just stuff that had to be said, It right? needed to be said, it so let's be say it. Now look, I am not going to hate on Tyreek Hill for defending his brand new quarterback or hyping up his brand new quarterback. After all, that's what you should do when you're considered to be a team captain of the team and one of the highest earners of the team. But we all know that Tyreek Hill didn't necessarily go to the Miami Dolphins because he felt that Tua was going to help him evolve as a wide receiver or because he felt like Tua was a better quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. The real reason was, well, he even told you the real reason he went to Miami in his introductory press conference. If somebody comes to you with a lot of money, it, it, it changes. It changes. The feelings start to change a little bit. Which brings us to Patrick Mahomes' reaction, because I wasn't even expecting a reaction from Patrick Mahomes, but his reaction to this was so freaking spectacular. Just take a look at it. I'm surprised a, a little, um, just because I feel like we, we love Tyreek here. We've always loved him. We still love him. I saw him out at Formula One in Miami um, and everything like that, but um, I mean, I'm sure it had something to do with trying to get his podcast some, some stuff and get it rolling, uh, but... Uh... So this is what I'm talking about. A little bit of controversy in order to make your podcast pop off. I am not going to knock Tyree Kill for trying to blow up his podcast because honestly, I'm all for NFL players and superstars getting on the internet, telling us how they feel about specific things. It creates some very interesting storylines. We get to know them better as players. And honestly, it's resulted in some incredible content. Like I myself personally watch the Pat McAfee show every single day. It's awesome. And I could say as a YouTuber, this wasn't necessarily the way I came up, but this is a very popular means of coming up. The number one way to come up like the fastest is by leveraging controversy. So Patrick Mahomes is very astute in knowing this and essentially calls out Tyreek Hill for trying to cloud up his podcast a little bit. Definitely. I still love Tyreek. He's one of a kind player. Um, but uh, as you know, in Coach Reed's offense, it takes the whole team. I mean, this offense was rolling before I got here. This offense was rolling when I was a young Cowboy fan watching the Eagles beat up on the Cowboys. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an offense that's more than one player, and that includes myself. Have you talked to him at all about it? I haven't talked to him since the podcast um, that came out. But, I mean, I talked to him in Formula One in Miami in May, um, and everything seemed fine. So, uh, it's, uh, it's something where I'm sure he's trying to – He's trying to show that he, he, he loves where he's at in Miami. Um, he, he, he loves his teammates. Um, but at the end of the day, man, it's just going out there and playing football, and you kind of let other people talk about who's the best and all that different type of stuff. You just want to go out there and win football games at the end of the day. I give credit to Mahomes for trying to make it more about the team and for praising his head coach, not saying it's about one player. And even going as far as to mention how successful the Chiefs were underneath the Alex Smith era. If you guys remember, Alex Smith's okay. final season with the Kansas City Chiefs was a near MVP season for him. So props to Mahomes for handling this question with class and not necessarily adding fuel to the fire. Now what the next reporter asks him is, was this something that was bubbling up in the middle of the season or did he get blindsided by it? When you're the competitor that he is, I mean, that's the thing that I loved about Tyreek and I still love is that he wants to win. And I feel like uh, with the de coverages that we were getting, defenses are really accounting for him. And so we got to go other places. Um, but when he's a competitor like that, you want to have a chance to impact the game. So I know he wanted to, to get the ball as much as possible so he could help us win. It wasn't a selfish thing. Um, but uh, it definitely, I didn't I didn't seem like he, I mean, we were winning football games, especially at the end of the season. So I didn't think he really kind of brought that to our attention. But uh, now we just kind of move on and kind of we keep going with the guys that we have here and we try to keep winning football games. Honestly, man, I don't think it's that complicated. Tyreek Hill had a very unique opportunity to capitalize off of an inflated wide receiver market. And from my perception of things, unless if he does something out of the ordinary, this is without a doubt going to be the final big contract of Tyreek Hill's career. So going to Miami, 
Miami, teaming up with a reputable head coach, creating a what I think is a very impressive offense and defense in the offseason, working with a quarterback that isn't Mahomes, but he is very accurate. I'll give two of that. Who hasn't necessarily been given the greatest opportunity to really show you what he's made of and becoming the highest paid wide receiver in the entire NFL and making $30 million annually, which to put that in perspective is more than double what Tom Brady made last year. Like, I want you guys to wrap your head around this. In 2017 and 2018, quarterbacks were getting paid $26.5 million a year. That's what they were getting as contract extensions. And then Jimmy Garoppolo got a crazy contract where his cap number was going to be $37 million. So what I'm trying to say is, obviously, the reason why Tyreek Hill went to the Miami Dolphins was because it was a significantly better opportunity. And the reason why the Kansas City Chiefs traded him is because they got a significant return on their investment for trading him. I don't think there's much more to it than that, but let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. I had a lot to say about this topic, but aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.